I'm Chimama Mangazi with Business Time on Times. It is a magazine program where we bring you business and economic news stories making headlines. Insuring and saving with Old Mutual means growing crops, growing jobs, growing a future. Creating mutual futures, your money invested for the good of all. In the program today, Malawians react to IMF measures upon the nation after approving an extended credit facility program. Also in the program, government challenged on implementing the Malawi 2063 development blueprint. We have these under the stories. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has put in place a number of measures for Malawi to meet after Capitol Hill bagged the Extended Credit Facility Program. The targets are categorized into fiscal, monetary and financial, external, governance and climate. But what do Malawians make of the situation, especially in regard to suggested tax measures? Justin Nkwewo has more in this report. Among the conditions, Malawi will have to comprehensively remove VAT exemptions for business inputs. For instance, when businesses are importing raw materials today, say for example cooking oil, there is no VAT. Now it has to apply, which could mean cooking oil produced locally could cost more. Government is also required to ensure that every supply of a motor vehicle is standard rated for VAT purposes. Standardized motor vehicle duty means that no matter what year or engine size of the vehicle, the duty should be the same. Government should also repeal VAT relief for building materials such that all suppliers of building materials, construction services and commercial property are standard rated. Currently, when one is buying building materials for commercial construction, there is no VAT. On duty-free imports, IMF says government should repeal VAT relief for current and former politicians, senior public officials, judges, and other similar privileged individuals and groups. In other words, governments should remove duty-free service on judges, politicians, and others and put VAT on the importation of their motor vehicles. Currently, these officials import a certain amount of cars with no duty VAT at all. These reforms should be implemented by July next year. However, the Chief Executive Officer for Institute of Chartered Accountants in Malawi, ICAM, Noah Goa, says Malawi should trade with caution on eliminating VAT exemptions and zero ratings for business inputs and repeating VAT relief for building materials. According to him, if implemented, the reform will make locally made products more expensive as manufacturers would have to factor in the removed VAT. In the end, he says, local consumers will shun local products for imported ones. This would affect local companies and elevate Malawi's status as being a net importing and consuming nation. IMF also believes that government should put huge duty charges on imported used motor vehicles so that they are made expensive. But one of the car dealers in Malawi has expressed concern. Government is supposed to play a big role to protect the indigenous. I'm mentioning the word indigenous because indigenous Malawians are suffering. So as a parent, government should be there, should provide a protection so that at the end of the day, at the end of the because life will pass, but at least the citizen should also not suffer that much. The Malawi government has managed convince the IMF to give it the extended credit facility, which amounts to $174 million in the next four years. The Economics Association of Malawi, ECAMA, has reiterated the need for the government to stick to implementing developmental plans as embedded in the Malawi 2063 blueprint. ECAMA President Bechani Chereni was speaking in response to the media budget which is being deliberated by Parliament. Chereni believes if the implementation plans keep being given a blind eye, Malawi will continue going in circles without any tangible development. He explains. 
The Minister of Finance, Simplex Tichola Banda, presented the mid-year budget to Parliament. Of course, this budget didn't start with him. It started with Sosten Gwengwe, the then minister. But most of the things that were presented in this mid-year budget are plans that might be introduced in the next budget, plans on taxes and everything. We dive deep today about the mid-year budget and, of course, the plans that were just introduced and i'm joined by the president of the economics association of malawi ekama dr bechani chelen you are welcome thank you firstly i'm sure you listened to the budget or you have had time to read it what do you make of the media budget review um <laughs> thank you um it's it's a it's a media budget uh that is um, it's just responding to the macroeconomic environment the way it is now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we came up with the budget, that must have been uh, some six, seven months ago, yes. we, um, the, the, there were some assumptions that were made, mm -hmm. uh, assumptions about inflation, mm -hmm. uh, that it was going to be within 9% 9, 9 or some, yes. somewhere thereabout, yes. assumptions about the interest rates, mm -hmm. assumptions about the exchange rate mm -hmm. also, economic growth. So all those assumptions in economics terms, we say that they have been violated. What it means is that they do not hold now. Uh, we know that the exchange rate due to the, um, uh, to the mini devaluations plus the major devaluation, yeah. we have seen that the exchange rate has gone uh, off the roof. Yeah. And, um, and that means that government being one of the biggest buyers from many suppliers who supply commodities that have been imported, we will we, we, we have to cough more money. With the devaluation, it means that uh, we have seen electricity prices going up. Yes. And uh, we have also seen, because of the same um, uh, de de devaluation, we have also seen that uh, um, other utilities prices have also been raised. So if you look at that then, you realize one thing, that uh, the budget really needed to respond to that. So that's why the, 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 the gap has gone up from the 3.4 trillion to somewhere around 4 trillion. On, um, uh, Malawi Gwach. We have seen also that because of the same devaluation, we have seen that uh, um, uh, the nominal value of our debt has also gone up. It's the nominal value because in there we've got the debts that have been um, uh, incurred uh, in foreign currency. So because of that then, the devaluation means that the quacha value of those debts goes up. That's why it comes to the 12 trillion. So so, so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a really one mid-term uh, budget review that is simply responding to the macroeconomic environment that is giving some hope, not necessarily about investment hope, but hope about uh, what can happen to cushion some of the uh, impacts or implications of the devaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a budget also, uh, a, a, a media budget that in a way one can observe, one can see that it is a uh, uh, pretty much um, uh, responsive. Yes. What do I mean by responsive? Um, you, what, what, what one would have wanted to sit down and consider what should we do to you know shock the economy for growth, mm -hmm. but that opportunity has not been there because of the macroeconomic environment. Inflation rate is is is, is to the north of twenty seven percent, I yes. think. Yes. And so when inflation rate is that high, exchange rate is that, that misbehaving. Uh, the policy rate itself also responding again to the same macroeconomic environment, then the budget really cannot cannot be cannot give enough space to the Minister of Finance for him really to bring in the investment and all projects. But uh -huh. uh -huh. so we need a cure for the economy, and part of that cure really is to do what you say in uh -huh. Parliament in uh -huh. the budget statement. Uh -huh. If you say that this year we're not going to buy any new car for uh -huh. any senior government official, uh -huh. mean that exactly that because that way then we are going to save the foreign exchange we are going to save even the budget itself mm -hmm. if 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 it means that this year we are going to have a, a factory in each constituency rather than a constituency development fund mm -hmm. let's do that because i am an industry economist mm -hmm. based on and i always say that the constituency
Social Development Fund is not necessarily helping to grow and develop the country. Mm -hmm. No, it is not. Mm -hmm. It is helping to buy votes for people. Yeah. But we want an expenditure that is going to assist in creating jobs. If we have a factory in each constituency, it means 193 factories. Mm -hmm. If in each factory we are employing, say, for example, 200 people, if you do your maths, it means that we are quite somewhere high. Mm -hmm. People being employed, people getting jobs, and people people's poverty getting dealt with. Mm -hmm. With that also, it means that we are going to collect more domestic taxes, you know. But for the next budget, what yeah. do you think are the main reforms and projects that the country should focus on? You see, the MIP-1, Malawi um, uh, Implementation uh, uh, Plan, yes. number one, mm. it's it's a blueprint that if we can just religiously follow that, mm -hmm. then we should not have any problems as a country. Religiously so, mm -hmm. because we are not religiously funding or financing that blueprint. Mm -hmm. If, if for, for, for example, the MIP-1 says that it by 2023, uh, by or by 2024, we want to see a, a, a 1,000 megawatt electricity generating plant somewhere, whether it's up north or where. Let's finance that. Let's let's finance that. If you are saying that we are going to see a Malawi Development Corporation, let's finance that. If you are saying we are going to see a university somewhere in the north, mm. let's finance that. So 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 for me, there's no need for any reform. Mm. There's, there's no need for any reform. There's just need for a discipline to follow what we have purposed to be the the, the trajectory that is transformative for the economy. So 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 if for for for, for example, five trillion kwacha is going to sp to be spent only the MIP one and the MIP one alone. Closing our ears, closing our eyes, whatever somebody says, we don't listen. We just do according to the MIP one. That if we can do that for four or five years, even for two years, I challenge hmm. this country's transformation will be very very clear. Uh, now there have been uh, promises of probably a resumption in terms of direct budget support. Uh, we have seen even uh, recently, I think it's, it, it was the UNDP uh, saying, yeah, uh, they are contemplating on that and other development partners. Mm -hmm. what, what, what does that mean to the country? Well, uh, people need to understand that uh, as a predominantly importing country, we do have a huge problem of foreign exchange flows into the country. So we, 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 we are failing as a country to generate the foreign reserves important for us to buy strategic commodities. So when others are saying, uh, look, we are w w willing to come in and support you directly into the budget, that means that the investment budget or what we call the development budget, it can now be increased. Because the trend the past 10 years has been that the, the development or investment budget has been going down. Mm -hmm. So it has been going down and down and down. It means that we have been becoming a much more consuming nation than a much more producing uh, nation. Mm -hmm. So with this direct budgetary support, they don't support allowances. Mm -hmm. They don't support, for example, salaries. They support mainly uh, infrastructure development. So if you want a bridge, that's what they want to support you with. If you want to build something somewhere, they support you with that and our hope our desire is that those inflows can increase to take there was a time in, Mal in Malawi the development budget could go up to 40 percent even more that's what we are looking for right now the Minister of Finance has doesn't have any space at all for him to think about any development whether they want to do a mega farm we have to take some resources somewhere a little somewhere like like, like like right now through the the the, the midterm budget review mm -hmm. the minister said that the four 4.4 billion kwacha that would have been saved due to the slashes in the fuel yeah. is going to go towards a mega farm. Mm -hmm. So that's how the minister can actually get resources and that's bad. So if he's going to get more resources via this direct budgetary support, then trust me, we can begin to see some tra tra transformation happening. We want to be a predominantly producing and exporting, exporting. country. What are we going to export if we don't have the machines? What are we going to pro to, to, to to, uh, a, 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 to produce if we don't have the raw materials. Mm -hmm. So we need the raw materials, we need the machines, we need that. That's why So they need to understand why the commitment was made, mm -hmm. that these things must be zero rated. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, we now get the tax from income tax that comes from yes. there. The income tax, mm -hmm. and then there is also the sales tax that mm -hmm. you get from there. Mm -hmm. That's what we now get. 
So if somebody is going to sit and say that, look, um, uh, you are the IMF, if they are very, very um, uh, proper people, mm -hmm. they should tell us two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, um, uh, start taxing people when they enter the country to, 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 to do mining. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. so, so they, but they are avoiding that. Why? That's what they, they must tell us, that if, if somebody is going to come here with a mining company and they want to mine, don't give them a five-year tax or holiday. Mm. Give them a six-month tax or holiday so that you can start to tax earlier. Yeah. That's what we need. Mm. They should also tell us, which is quite a very, very common knowledge, that there are so many people who are not being taxed. Mm. Can you start to tax them? Mm. That's again, is what we need. All right. Well, that's our chat with the president of Economics Association of Malawi, Dr. Bechani uh, Chereni, on the uh, budget, the media budget, and of course, maybe what we should expect from the coming budget. Keep watching Times TV. This is business time coming to you, KTC of Odd Mutual Malawi. We'll be right back. Ku Malawi, Dimane Nagudi, Jumajili Muntak. Ndibo is in Dizona. Mutaguzona zimene zipali bonse. Zina langa ndi Chris Gadimani. Ndipo ndi mayanganila banja langa kwa gwila nchido kugala Max Makademi ya Nat Farm. Zonse zima yambila banaza alebano. Tima samalila mpugila kutiti kwa nitse kuzala mitengo ya mbili. Mitengo yi kagula. Tima sanka monte za wabu ino kwa mbili oka oka. Tima funa kuti nite za wabu makademi ya wabu malawi uzidzu hika kuti ndi wabu ino kwa Tika kolola kwa mbili, tima lemba so nchito wa ntuwa mbili. Ndima kala onyadila kukala na ote nga mbali mzimenezi. From the soil comes endless possibilities. That's why Old Mutual is investing for the long term from the ground up. We call this creating mutual futures. Old Mutual, let's do great things every day. Welcome back. The Surveyors Institute of Malawi has described the recent 44% devaluation of the Malawi Kwacha as a double sword. SIM President Desmond Namangale says the development has brought both negatives and positives depending on who is being affected in the real estate sector. Namangale explains. Early this month, the government, through the Reserve Bank of Malawi, announced a 44% devaluation of the Malawi Kwacha. This was received with mixed reactions, but most of them said it was necessary. The Malawi Confederation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, MCCCI, for example, said it was just a matter of time. The devaluation was long overdue. Though necessary, as it may be described, it has brought different calamities on people especially ordinary Malawians, because prices of goods and services have gone up. Different industries have reacted as in how the devaluation would affect them. But today, we are talking about the real estate sector. For that, we are joined by the president of Surveyors Institute of Malawi, Mr. Desmond Namangali. Welcome. Thank you very much. Firstly, just uh, to find out, how do you think or how will the devaluation affect the real estate sector? Well, uh, devaluation is uh, a double-edged sword. Yes. Why? Uh, we have uh, different players in the real estate sector. We have the investors, we have the landlords, we have the developers. Now, uh, on the landlord point of view, it's a blessing in disguise because we say real estate hedges inflation. By definition, devaluation means the money buying power has reduced, which means, by any means, prices of goods and services are likely to go up. Now, but it doesn't happen just right at the moment, because we say real estate economy follows the national economy. Uh, the impact might be failed, but not now, in the next three months, six months, 12 months, so on and so forth, by increasing the rentals. You find that by now, landlords can't increase the rentals because 
they are already using the leases that mm -hmm. are already existing. Yeah. But time will come whereby leases have to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. Now this is the point whereby the landlords will have to increase the rentals. Yeah. So to them, at this point in time, the diversion will be failed in reducing the money buying power. But time will come whereby this has, this has to be adjusted to meet the economy at that point in time. Now, when you talk from the investor point of view, these are investors who are, say, living outside the country. It means their forex is of higher value than the local currency. Now, we are property managers here. We are selling a property, say, at 20 million. It means this 20 million is of less value to their forex yes. and like our local currency here. So those, those people can easily buy real estate in our, in our, in our context. Yeah. Whereby from the develop, develop point of view now, mm. it means the cost of uh, materials has gone higher. Mm. You might wish to know that uh, most of the building materials that we use, over 90%, we import. Yes. So for somebody to import building materials to build at this point in time, it will be very difficult. Mm. Which means all the construction projects will have to be stopped, which will result into time overruns, cost overruns, and at some point, the quality of the buildings will be affected. Yes. But all in all, as I said, it depends on which side of the economy you want to speak on the part of the valuation. So that's why I said it's a double-edged sword. As you might have noted, the insurance companies yes. are revising their premiums yeah. simply because we insure to replace our building. For example, this building that we're sitting under. In case a calamity happens, the insurance company has to build back, build, build another building. Now, we use the gross replacement cost, gross replacement values, which go by the cost of building as of now. That's why those construction, those insurance companies are revising the premium, premium because with the devaluation, it means the premium at which this property was insured has gone down. So in case of an emergency happening today, say for example fire, it means the cost of replacing this property will be higher than what was insured here. Now, uh, do you think the devaluation is at uh, forty-four percent? Yes. Should um, uh, uh, those who rent uh, these properties expect the landlords to raise the rentals as high as forty-four uh, percent? That, that would be very unfortunate. Of course, we can't give a a figure right away because we, as we're speaking now, we have uh, professionals who are working on the sale. We should be having something in the papers, in the press in the next two or three weeks, because the people, our, our, our professionals are conducting their studies on the same. But it would be very unfortunate to increase the rentals by 44%, because uh, real estate is affected by location. Yes. What we have here, where we are sitting now in the Blanta CBD, the value of the property here can be the same as in the outskirts of the CBD. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the location will determine the value of increment. Because you, you could have uh, this, uh, this building here, but uh, there is no demand. Mm. So even if you increase the rentals, who will occupy it? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. There has to be demand first. And when demand is high, it means the price will go up. Mm. But you can't increase the prices, and yet there's no, there's no demand. Yeah. Who are you increasing the, the, the supply, the, the, the price for? Yes. Yeah, so there, there has to be caution exercise. Because just because you have had the devaluation doesn't automatically mean that you increase the rentals by 44%. Because there has to be demand for this uh, space here, yeah. for us to increase the rentals. If there's no demand, there's no sense of increasing the rentals. Mm -hmm. General insurance companies under the Insurance Association of Malawi, IAM, have unveiled an automated motor vehicle insurance system linked to the Malawi traffic information system. The digital system, which has been in use since October this year, will enable clients to insure automobiles online and further ensure efficiency. IAM Innovation Committee Chairperson Don Bell Mandala says the technology will allow clients pay for their vehicles insurance at their convenience. Mandala explains. We as a market, an insurance market in Malawi, we are so excited to launch this digital certificate. Uh, basically, the digital certificate can be issued online and any time of the day and from any of our offices as insurance companies. Basically, apart from the first the convenience, for us as well, the milestone is coming in from the sense that the previous disk used to be uh, easily forged, but this one, because it's digital, it cannot be easily forged. 
Secondly, the more convenience that you as a customer, you'll be able to verify the validity of the disk whilst you're sitting in the comfort of your house through the uh, code star 4273 hash from any phone that you have. From our end, as insurance companies, uh, we really are working towards embracing this digital environment and that's why we have said that the old disk will never be issued again after 31st December 2024, 2023. So it means every insurance company is now pushed to issue the disks that are digital. Now for you, our customers, we'll be forcing you to accept the technology because we will not use any other disk apart from this digital disk come 1st January. So we believe that you will be able to embrace it and being convenient, it will also be easier for you to access us. It took us uh, too long and um, it's anything else like anyone else. You find that you've got a certain habit that you want to do, it takes it too long to get there. But once you get it, you get excited. So we're so excited about this innovation that we have brought in this digital certificate. So as mentioned earlier, there is a lot of that will come after this digital certificate. One of the things is that we we'll also create um, a WhatsApp uh, chat box with the digital certificate in future. And that when you're involved in an accident, we'll be able to use that facility to call for a towing car, but also to call for an ambulance and also to notify your insurers immediately. But also take pictures around of your vehicle and also load them to show that indeed the accident happened at that particular time and at that particular location. But that's for the next six or 12 months coming from 2024. We'll start with the Forex 7. The previous disc, we used to order them from Bahrain and we're paying in a lot of dollars. I think on average, uh, if you order 20,000 discs, we're paying close to $100,000. So obviously, these ones, we're not paying dollars, we're issuing them online. You're printing from an ordinary paper, no longer that scientific uh, security paper. So we're already saving Forex on there, maybe 400000 a year. But also apart from that, we are also saving time. The old disk you had to travel to our offices to collect. You're spending fuel. Fuel is connected to Forex. Now, you can only be receiving it through your data, WhatsApp, or your email. So it's a very cheap uh, certificate because you can access it anytime, anywhere, without incurring any cost. And in addition to that, you can only activate as well if, <coughs> if you pay. So you'll be forced to pay online, no longer bringing in these matambalas to pay us. Uh, the other ones were being for in the sense that uh, they were uh, pre-printed disk, so we would print the disk and then people would go and edit the, the, uh, the, the registration number or the chassis number because they used to fade, so they'll go and just re-edit them. But this one, because it's using a, a QR scan code, you can't fo forge that one unless you are very, very scientifically, technically up there. But otherwise, you will not be easily able to forge it. Well, with that item, we've come to the end of today's edition of Business Time. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Chimomo Mangazi. But always remember, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Bye for now. Brought to you by Old Mutual. Creating mutual futures, your money invested for the good of all.